Um, all right. So Hunter clearly didn't talk for a long time, and he had to get it all out. <laughs> okay, so he gets a talk. I want to get a talk too. Um, who taught security? Yeah, I think. Are people still awake? I'm not sure. So who thinks? Uh, who said security was going to be exciting, right? Uh, not many people. All right. Um, so at SWAT, uh, SWAT is a company I just joined like um, half a year ago. We also had uh, to implement a kind of secure environment. Um, well, I, I dare, dare I say that I made a very secure environment. And uh, I wanted to share a little bit of, of what we did. I think this talk is um, going to be a bit uh, focused on a certain use case. So I just want to know like, who's using Amazon Web Services? Right, that's a good amount of people. Who's using Google Cloud? Okay, less. <laughs> and um, Azure? Okay, okay, so. All right, so um, at least uh, I'm using Amazon. So who's using the hosted or managed Kubernetes clusters in Amazon? Okay, two people. Everybody else, who's using Chaos, uh, Kubernetes operations? Okay, just me and the honest honest people. <laughs> All right, so that's maybe going to be a little bit um, less. Oh, okay. I like Kubernetes, uh, and my other image is gone. Um, so I also like Chaos, which is the Kubernetes operation. It's a tool that you can use to provision Kubernetes clusters in uh, Amazon. And um, I want to highlight a few features that I use a lot. So for example, uh, one of the features of Chaos is the ability to create like a plus um, an organization where you, you manage like your um, yeah, the COPS template, and then you have your defaults, and then you have like different clusters. So in this case, I have a template uh, in, in Chaos. All the clusters are defined as a manifest, very similar to how you define anything in Kubernetes. For example, a deployment, use a manifest. So in this case, I can use a, how does this thing work? Uh, all right, all right, the right one. Okay, so um, the API version here is COPS, not Kubernetes. And then in this case, I'm talking about the cluster, and I have um, parameterized the cluster name, some buckets where I put some add-ons, and things like that. So using this, I can specify some defaults. For example, my cluster it has a default cluster domain, uh, zone ID, these are not the real values. Um, and a version that I want by default to be for my clusters. This is very long time ago, right? I'm not using 1.9 anymore. <laughs> um, Hunter was saying how everything is changing so quickly. So I want to know, like, who's using Kubernetes 1.9 still? Running Kubernetes 1.9. Wow. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> who's using 1.10? 1.11? Okay, that's all right. 1.12? Okay, 1. 1.13? Okay. Okay, nobody. All the Google, all the Google Cloud Platform people should be like 1.12, right? Uh, anyway. Okay, so um, then you can provide some um, variables, and also, for example, you can provide them your uh, cluster-specific one. In this case, I created a demo cluster, and I have created uh, dedicated subnets for it. So, if anyone is familiar with Chaos, they know that by default, Chaos will create a bunch of subnets for you. Uh, but I will go over some reasons why you don't want to use that. Actually, I want to go really fast, and like I said, this is going to be quite chaos oriented, so I'm just going to go really fast. If you want to learn, after this presentation, you want to learn chaos, go ahead, and then you can go back to the video and uh, see like, hey, what was he talking about? Maybe I can use some of these things. Uh, if you said, I never want to use chaos, that's fine, sorry, sorry, it's nine. <laughs> um, I'll try to go fast. So yeah, um, using uh, subnets, um, and all those parameters that you want to pass in for cluster specific uh, values. Next, um, I love uh, make, make targets. So uh, in this case, I create a little make target that uses the toolbox template function that uses my default template, my default values, and then my cluster specific um, values and, and manifest. In this case, I just need to run make cluster demo, and it's going to pull everything together and generate the, the whole cluster um, definition. <coughs> so why do you want to separate your subnets? Uh, by default, uh, I don't want to use the chaos. After after you've used chaos for a while, you realize that um, actually I think the main reason is routing tables. Um, but there could be other reasons that you want to manage your subnets. I think in, in Amazon, the main reason to manage your own subnets is to set up your own tags and to set up your own routing tables. For example, if you do a lot of VPC peering, uh, if you do a lot of connections from other like data centers, 
Um, and if you want to do some egress controls, for example, um, as uh, Hunter mentioned, Vistio allows you to do egress with whitelisting for the outgoing domains, like if your containers are connecting to Google to, or to other com um, domains, to make sure that you allow those connections. And um, in my project, unfortunately, I could not push Istio yet, so I had to find an alternative outside of Kubernetes solution to uh, whitelist the outgoing connections. So for these reasons, you might want to run your own subnets. Um, so how do you do that? I like Terraform, so Kubernetes Terraform helps. There we go. Um, so in this case, I'm defining a bunch of uh, availability zone uh, subnets, and then I specify my uh, shared subnets where I Put in a couple of tags. These tags are important. They define, they let Kubernetes know where it can create external load, load balancers. So whenever you create a Kubernetes cluster in Amazon, if you use Chaos or anything else, they're always going to use tags to let Kubernetes identify the subnets where it will create load balancers. So um, that's one thing. And then after that, I actually have animations. Everybody else lost theirs. Um, after that, I have to create private subnets for my specific cluster. In this case, I have two types. I have my edge nodes and my uh, compute nodes. This is also something that was mentioned in Hunter talk. It's about um, se segregating using uh, nodes, using taints and um, um, affinity, I think, to um, push certain containers onto certain nodes. So I have a couple of edge services that I want to run on edge nodes and a couple of um, application services that go deeper in my network. Uh, so in this case, I create two separate subnets for this. Uh, again, the, t the tags on the subnet are important. I am um, letting Kubernetes know that this particular subnet is owned, so it's not shared with any other cluster, so it can usually do more stuff with it. And also that this will be used for the Kubernetes um, API internal. This is actually not a specific Kubernetes tag, this is my personal tag because I need to do some uh, VPC routing, so I use it to uh, identify some subnets with this tag. And then finally, I... Um, I have my um, edge where I basically tell here, if I need to create internal load balancers, they go into my edge subnets. So earlier we saw um, this tag, which is for the external load balancers. And if I need to hit from inside my VPC, I'm going to create it inside in the same subnet as the edge. Is this good? Maybe not. Maybe I should create my load balancer in a separate subnet where I was lazy. Um, next. Um, so this is where my subnets and I entered and um, spliced into my COPS uh, definition, as I mentioned earlier. And in the end, I get a nice cluster spec generated like this, where I have my subnets uh, specified and my edge, uh, edge uh, subnets specified, allowing me to then uh, create different instance groups. So why do you want to use edge nodes? Um, compliance requirements. If you need to have, um, if, if there is a customer requiring you to hit certain nodes before you hit other nodes, uh, you might need to run edge nodes or different types of nodes. Um, how? Like I mentioned, using a dedicated instance group, uh, which you use to tag and put taints, and then also by using uh, load balancers that can be limited to edge nodes. So, what's the, so let me go into those two points real quick. So the first one is uh, an instance group definition in Chaos looks like this. So we have Chaos definition instance group. And I am adding a label that this is my belongs to this cluster, and I'm adding a taint. This will force uh, explicit toleration. So that means if I want to run anything onto these nodes, I have to tolerate this taint. That's a way to schedule workloads onto specific nodes in Kubernetes. Another thing that I do is I put a label on top of the nodes, which is the instance group. I need this because I need to be able to select my load balancer only and hit the edge nodes. My load balancer should never touch any other nodes, not my application nodes directly. So I have to put a label on the nodes as well to find them later. Then finally, uh, how do I set up a load balancer uh, that only hits my edge nodes and don't hit my application nodes directly? The problem here is if you use Kubernetes service time load balancer, by default this will always hit all of your nodes. So if you use Kubernetes services, then um, you have three different types, a cluster IP, which is only accessible within the cluster, a uh, load, uh, sorry, node, port IP, node port type, which will open the port on every node in your cluster using IP tables, um, and then you can use um, load balancer. So if you use load balancer, it's going to create a node port, and then it's going to create with your cloud provider, a little bit like what we talked about earlier, service catalog, it's going out and create a load balancer, and then sets up the load balancer to hit every node on that node port that it was created. 
So the solution, I cannot use the default server-side load balancer. There is this great project from Zalando, uh, which is called Cube Ingress AWS Controller, which allows you to provide custom filters for your nodes. So earlier when I set up my Edge nodes with a label for Edge, then I can use my Ingress Controller to hit only the instances that have been selected for Edge. So this looks like this. When I deploy my, um, when I deploy my daemon spec, uh, sorry, my daemon set, uh, basically the controller is run to identify um, here the custom filters. So this, I give it the controller ID, and then I use uh, the Amazon region and the custom filters that I pass in uh, through templated function. This is basically um, Terraform templated manifest, and I will explain more how I use that. Okay, the end result is when I use my Terraform to, to bootstrap my cluster, I'm uh, going to create a, a module, I have a special module and I will go a bit of detail on that. Uh, and basically in my custom filter, I specify that the Kubernetes tag has to be uh, the, this particular cluster owned nodes, and the key uh, for the cluster autoscaler has to be a node template uh, taint for edge. Actually, I'm not using the label, I'm using the taint. Interesting. <laughs> So I don't need a label. Um, okay, <laughs> uh, but I do need a label for something else. I think for my, I don't know, for my morning today. Um, then I think earlier Hunter highlighted that. Um, I mean, hi Hunter highlighted a lot of things. <laughs> there was a lot of things to take care of. But one of the things was in terms of user authentication and authorization. So authorization. This is the same thing that you mentioned. I think the R bag, the audit events, and image whitelisting with admission controllers. Uh, one thing he mentioned also was the Open ID Connect, which you can do with Google and Dex, which is what we're using at OSV, right? And then the other thing is uh, to use the um, like Heptio Authenticator. If you're on Amazon and you run your own Kubernetes uh, nodes, um, you can integrate the authentication. Uh, if you use Open ID Connect, you can integrate with anything. You can integrate with GitHub. You can integrate with uh, anything that that uh, uh, talks the Open ID Connect protocol. Um, then. And if they don't talk OpenID Connect, you can use Dex to um, you know, talk to GitHub, for example. And then if you're running on Amazon and you don't want to uh, use a third-party authentication, you just want to use uh, AWS Identity Access Management, then you can use Heptio's Authenticator. So the, this is very technical, and I'm going to go really fast. Uh, so the Authenticator uh, requires these steps. First, you need to create an Identity Access Management role inside um, Amazon that your users, when they want to access the cluster, need to be able to uh, assume role. Then you need to set up um, certificates for uh, authenticating, like setting up the webhook uh, TLS. And you need to also reconfigure your Kubernetes API server to use a webhook. Then your authenticator daemon set needs to be scheduled across all your masters. How? I like Terraform and I like Chaos. So I use Terraform, Chaos, hooks, and add-ons. So real quick, first Terraform to create a role. Uh, just create a current account trust um, policy document that basically says the root of the account is allowed to assume this um, role. So we trust this, um, so users can assume this role through the root of the account. And we then push, uh, sorry, what's this? This is the user group. So I have a, a user group and then I basically give the user the ability to assume the um, role. Actually, this one is to give the Amazon service the ability to assume the role, and this one is to give the user the ability to use the Amazon service to assume the role. Right. Okay. Next, um, I have to specify the TLS certificates. So I'm using uh, a private key, then get, based on that private key, generate a self-signed certificate, which is signed for local host, because the um, authenticator only listens on local host, and the Kubernetes API server talks through local host to authenticate the user. Then. I, um, I generate these certificates and use S3 to push all this information into, um, yeah, use Terraform to push it into S3. And finally, I need to set up my API server to authenticate um, and basically set up the basic C4 encoded um, um, certificate signature and then provide the URL that this API server needs to talk to local hosts to authenticate. So using the local host, it will talk to the daemon set, which is the authenticator uh, service. So the authenticated service then needs to have those variables. So again, this is templated in. So this is how you use a Terraform template. And then finally, push that configuration to S3 as well. And when I bootstrap my nodes with, with Chaos, I basically can say every node 
whenever it gets created, if the role is master, not, not my uh, compute nodes, if they are master nodes, then it will quickly run a Docker container. Because this is CoreOS, I don't have any you know, AWS, Python, or anything. So I need to, whenever the CoreOS node starts, I need to do a Docker run to um, quickly copy from S3 all of the data, so the TLS certificates, the web configuration, everything, and then on the API server, I have to set up the API server authenticator to use this config. So I know that at this point, I've done the um, set up the role, set up the TLS, set up the configuration for the webhook, and then bootstrap my masters to pull all the certificates from S3. Next, um, finally, Kubernetes um, chaos operations has this add-on bootstrapping uh, thing. So whenever you create a cluster spec, you can specify add-ons that you manage. So in my case, I have my own add-ons uh, that are having their own channel. So the way it, a channel looks is a channel of add-ons can have multiple add-ons. So at Swap Mobile, we use many add-ons that we want to use. For example, our um, ingress like I use a special ingress controller, right? So I have a special add-on to manage my ingress. And I have a special add-on to automatically provision my authentication as well, okay? There's a point to this presentation that I'll, I'll get to. <laughs> um, and then I can do this. I get, you can watch the video if you want to get the details of uh, how this is basically, this is a daemon set uh, that is running on uh, all of the masters. So this daemon set will run, run on the masters, uh, we'll be able to expose the uh, authenticator for the webhook uh, on the masters. Wow. Uh, and then this is templated as well. So the cluster ID is templated, so again I have uh, some templated add-ons that basically are pushed into S3. Alright. So, I wrote this post on Reddit this morning. Um, basically, what are we doing wrong? All right. Our DevOps is trying to replicate Google Cloud Service locally. Um, only a few wizards know how to use Kubernetes and uh, why we also running self-managed self Prometheus. So this was an interesting post because after everything I told you and everything that Hunter told you. It's so simple. It's so simple, right? It's so simple. So why even you mentioned the DevOps guy has been working on this for over a year. <laughs> so, um, and this was, I don't know why I put this slide here. <laughs> because uh, the next part is also, that's, that's one part, but this is also about the security. Like, if you want to secure your Kubernetes components, you want to set up TLS between your etcd and Kubelet bootstrapping, uh, and you want to set up all of this, right? So, as you see, when to opt for custom deployment, right? Um, when you do your custom deployment, you need to set up your uh, symmetric keys that need to be rotated. Right? Your Kubernetes talks with TLS, so you need to rotate those keys uh, over time. You can probably use Kube Admin now, but uh, at the time I was setting up the cluster, it wasn't like, uh, production ready. Then also we need to isolate etcd, we need to do all of this. right? So what you get is you get bleeding edge. You get choice. I can choose my machine configuration, I can choose my operating system, my storage backends, my network plugins, my ingress configuration, I can choose everything, right? I have, I have a lot of choice. But the trade-off is you might end up in Kubernetes nightmare where you have only a few people that are able to do this. And doing this for a while, I start to realize more and more that actually going with a managed Kubernetes solution um, kind of start to make sense. Like, uh, am I getting... I, I only two people were using Google, uh, Google Cloud hosted Kubernetes, right? And there was one person using Amazon's. I can understand why you're not using Amazon's hosted. So, um, who's running Kubernetes on bare metal? Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, after doing this for a while, I start to realize you. This is hard. Definitely, if you come down to the security part, right? We are not all experts, and we cannot all make this work uh, perfectly. So, um, and then as an add-on onto Kubernetes, uh, sorry, onto Hunter's talk, you are now called Kubernetes, um, onto, onto Hunter's talk, part of it was um, regarding application lifecycle. Um, as Hunter mentioned, with containers we have immutable images and we can, uh, we can move the scanning of, uh, or we can start verifying for ver vulnerabilities right at the build, build stage. So we need to integrate our security more towards the CI pipeline, more towards the left side, which is where the build starts. And while it's being shipped, so we need to check the registries that we're using, as, as Hunter mentioned. And then we need to also, during the running part, we need to assure that the images that we are running are authorized. Um, so this is uh, a slide actually coming from Aquasec. 
And then, I mean, at least this part is coming from one sec. And then, uh, as a recap, that was pure on, on containers. But then when we talk about container orchestration, such as Kubernetes, uh, we not only need to do the scanning, but we also need to possibly set up admission hooks to make sure that the images have gone through the whole pipeline that they have been checked. Uh, we need to do the process whitelisting, we need to do binary whitelisting, no protection, and set up RBAC and ensure, lim uh, ensure least privilege approach. So, there is a lot of open source projects, right? Initially, when I look at this, I was like, okay, Claire, Coro has Claire open source, I can deploy it. Graphias, open source, awesome, I can deploy it, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, I decided that this time I'm not going to go there. And I actually looked at Aquasec, Twistlock, Sysdic Secure, and um, there was another, another one that uh, mentioned earlier as well, no? No, those are the only ones that I, 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 uh, I could find. And um, we have a lot of Twistlock stickers. Uh, but basically what they do, um, they, and this is again an Aquasec image, um, because their images are just nicer. Um, not only do they provide you with this initial scanning phase, but they also give you the runtime protection. Basically, they, they will intercept all the calls to the Docker team, and they will intercept and implement webhooks, admission webhooks to your Kubernetes uh, uh, platform. And they will also provide a container firewall, uh, allow you to do threat mitigation. Um, they also integrate with secrets uh, backend. So if you want to use Vault, or you want to use something like that, then you can set up um, rules to inject secrets inside containers. The great thing about this is that when you inspect the container, if you normally provide environment variables into a container and you inspect, you can see all the secrets. If you have access to um, the Docker uh, API to talk to uh, and look at the container, you can see everything. If you use their, um, their system, they kind of obfuscate the, the secrets from the container level, only inject it within the container. And I actually had a bunch of um, knowledge I wanted to share about how to inject secrets, um, which is probably another topic. Uh, because the Helm talk also touched on it. Uh, basic C4 encoded secrets are not really secure and, and it's important to look at that. Okay, so I didn't, make the, I didn't want to make the mistake of running everything myself. I chose for a platform. They, they're not necessarily cheap. It depends on what is your requirements and your uh, compliance requirements. So that's basically it. I hope that made some sense. All right, you have a question? Uh, yeah, I'm not familiar with COPS, but does that handle your host, net, host private network and Bastion hosts? Uh, with Chaos, you can also provision Bastions, but we took that out as well. Like, we um, we provision our own VPN and everything. So, actually, we don't we, we run all of our Kubernetes cluster only privately exposed, and we manage the VPN outside, so we don't want the Bastion for, for that as well. It depends on your use case, but yes, chaos. If you want, you can specify utility net subnets, and then bastions will be provided there. And the bastions and utility subnets shared by the ELB by default. So where your external load balances are. Yeah. Any other questions? No. Yeah. One. Okay. Uh, yeah. Right now, your Kubernetes cluster, like public uh, cluster or private cluster. Private. private. So which means the API server is also like only private access. Yeah. So my my client's cluster that needs to be secure is private. My personal like the the public the you will probably still find some public clusters. I just want to <laughs> guard myself before you attack me. Uh, but yeah, everything is private. Um, and then the problem is how do you manage CI/CD and things like that? If you use hosted solutions for for CI/CD, for example, Circle CI and things like that, it's going to be hard if everything is private because you need to have some some way to hit the API, right? Um, that's why I run my own CICT. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. Sorry? Bash script. Bash script. Well, SSH tunnels maybe, VPC peering. If, if, if you have a CICD hosted provider that allows you to do some SSH tunneling to hit the APIs, things like that, that, would, that will help. Otherwise, yeah, I need to run private uh, CI. Okay. Any other questions? All right. I also didn't talk for a while, and now it's out. Thank you very much. Great.